Hi everybody, it's Todd Nock and I'm back with the third part of this Nightcrawler character study, the Copic color uh, video. I'll be using Copic sketch markers for the colors in this video. What makes Nightcrawler fun is that uh, he has blue, I, I don't know if you call it skin, I guess it'd be blue skin, but he has a light blue fur uh, all over him. He, that's why he's called the Fuzzy Blue Elf. So I'll be using uh, different shades of blue. Uh, of blue marker uh, for his uh, skin tone and as you can see I'm using Canson recycled Bristol board a smooth finish uh, 9 by 12 piece of uh, artboard. So I laid in a base coat of the B14 you just seeing the white of the board as highlights as you can see there down the bridge of his nose on his chin a little bit on the jaw and on the cheeks just to give him some more depth. Pretty heavy shadows on Nightcrawler's face using a different shade of blue the B45 to really uh, bring a transition from the black area into the blue the lighter blue area uh, uh, for the for the shadows so really sculpting out the shapes there of, of his face with those two different shades of blue and uh, with his tail I'm doing the same thing uh, B14 uh, for the base coat and B45 for for shading for the consistency of uh, the skin or fur tones that I have uh, chosen here now one thing I like about working with the Copic sketch markers is that after the initial layer of color that I've put down has dried a bit, I will um, come back in and you'll see that coming right up here on the face. Now that that's had a time to dry while I've worked on the tail, I will re-layer in that same color, uh, whether it be the B14 or here, the B45 at this point, to darken up those, those shadows to bring in more transition. So you can layer color on top of color for uh, subtle uh, subtle um, shapes and effects and using the B45 as a base here on his hair slightly different shade as you can see without that B14 underneath uh, so it gives his, uh, the hair on his head a different shade a uh, different look than the hair the fuzz on his face now coming in with his eyes he's got these uh, somewhat glowing yellow eyes leaving a little bit of white you can barely see the white that I've left on the board as a tiny highlight and uh, using darker shades of yellow to uh, start to shape that out, give them some some form and, and, and dimension just, just a bit. So now it's time to color his costume, and that's going to require a lot of red. I'm still utilizing the white of the board here in his costume, like I did on his face and on his tail, as the highlight uh, uh, on, on his costume. Just a little bit. Don't have to use a lot, but just a little bit. So the light is kind of coming from above a bit. So anything that would be towards the top, like there on the, the shoulder pieces, the tops of his collarbone, through the ribcage here can be a bit of a challenge to figure out where those highlights go, but it's just experimenting. Same with the, uh, the abdomen, uh, the six pack here, the tops of each of those uh, muscles keeping a white highlight. I'll do the same on the arms and on the leg uh, parts of his gloves and boots, uh, uh, keeping that white of the board um, as a highlight so you'll see as I cut in through here keeping in mind the shapes of the uh, the forearm muscles and the calf muscles don't need a lot just just a little bit and it just adds a bit more more depth and dimension to 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 the figure so so keep that in mind uh, use that white of the board so once I've got the red in here I'm gonna come in with uh, a darker shade of red for the the shadows so since I know the white is the highlight from the light above the opposite side would be the uh, where the shadow would be. So that'd be the the bottom half of the shoulder pieces, the the pectoral muscles, and and on down to the rib cage, the the abs and the forearms and and, and calves of, of his uh, boots. So knowing that it's just the op the the bottom side is, is I just uh, want to add the shadow there. Pretty pretty straightforward, and sculpting the muscles as as necessary. So as I had mentioned in the first two videos, if uh, you hadn't had a chance to watch those yet, this is a character study I'm doing of Nightcrawler. I am the artist of the new Nightcrawler series that's coming out through Marvel Comics. Uh, Nightcrawler had been dead for a while. He died in an X-Men adventure back in 2010, and he has just now been brought back to life in the amazing X-Men comic series here earlier this year. So now um, myself and legendary X-Men writer Chris Claremont, uh, who I've been a fan of since I, I was... I was uh, a youth when I first started reading X-Men comics as a kid. I'm getting a chance to work with him, and we are 
continuing uh, Nightcrawler's adventures in the solo series. So it's a lot of fun. I'm very excited about it and uh, excited to let people know about it. So once the editor contacted me and asked if, if I was interested in drawing Nightcrawler, uh, of course, I immediately said yes. He's one of my favorite X-Men and um, began doing some uh, character study sketches to really hone in on my my flavor of, of Nightcrawler, really uh, put him through my style and, and, and get a feel for the classic uh, Nightcrawler that we all have uh, known from all the, the, the amazing artists who have drawn Nightcrawler before in, in, in X-Men comics from Dave Cockrum, the the creator of, of Nightcrawler, the let's see, John Byrne and, and Paul Smith and Alan Davis from the Excalibur days, which I think I might have mentioned these these fantastic artists from uh, in my previous video. So I want to uh, honor what they had, had done and, and maintain that classic look, but then bring my flavor to it. So that was the purpose of doing some character studies to really make sure I have a good feel for the character before I started uh, drawing the actual stories. So as you've been seeing, I've been working on the whites of uh, Nightcrawler's gloves and boots, using a cool gray as my choice of shadow color to uh, really give shape to the white, uh, white gloves, white boots, and then coming on with a slightly darker shade of cool gray to accentuate those shadows, just give it a little more depth and a little more for the eye to play with. And then coming back into the face with a little bit of a, a lighter blue, this B01, to create a transition between the blues I had put down initially on the face and here on the tail and the white area. So it's kind of a blending between those two, between the color and the white. So it's a more of a gradation. I thought it would uh, kind of give, again, a little more for the eye to play with color-wise. Now using my pencil to draw in a uh, loose guideline for a background shape and uh, use my triangle there on my T-squared for the vertical lines. So this is just to give uh, Nightcrawler a little pop off the page, uh, just so he's not standing on a white background. That'd be a little more fun to look at. And when you're, if you do decide to do a background shape, try to keep in mind not to have your lines cross behind any part of the body that is a, a joint, like the knees or the neck, elbows, wrists, ankles, things like that. So just above, just below the knee, uh, like you see here, I, I went higher up behind his forehead to really keep it away from the neck. It just doesn't look quite right if you, if you cross right at a major joint. That's called a tangent, and you want to avoid uh, tangents in, in your uh, design elements. So then I've chosen a uh, light, really light muted shade of purple here, uh, just so that uh, Nightcrawler uh, pops out more on the page. So I didn't want the background shade of purple to overpower, overpower Nightcrawler, so I've got this really muted shade to uh, to keep it on theme with his uh, teleportation power uh, color, but um, not so much that it becomes uh, dominant or competing with, with Nightcrawler himself. Oops, and I filled in a little color there off camera, but it's just filling in that blank area, not unlike what I'm doing right here, so uh, apologize for that. And now what I'm going to do here is to keep that same color going as an uh, outline on the parts of his body that are sticking outside of the outside of the rectangle here. So just a quick outline just to tie them all together. Just thought it kind of looked cool. So erasing the extra pencil lines from my rectangle that I didn't need and finishing off the the outlining of the, the rest of, of Nightcrawler here. So as I'm wrapping this up I want to just take a moment to say thanks for tuning in and thanks for subscribing to my channel. Thanks for the comments as well. So I, I'm, I appreciate all the support. Nightcrawler number one is on sale next week, April 9th. I'm excited that the book is finally launching. It's been a fun series to work on so far and I hope y'all have a fun time reading it. Uh, if you want to see a scan of this piece here, here's uh, the part in the video where I show a scan of the piece, but you can also see it on my uh, Facebook page on the link below. So uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll be back with more videos in the near future.